I'd like to uh, introduce myself. I'm Matt Hardigree. I am editor of the world's greatest automotive website, Jalopnik. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah! I swear I heard someone yell, speed hunters, when I said that. Um, I'm really, really glad to hear that uh, enthusiasm. Uh, we're going to want that tomorrow. This is a film festival. It is a party. So when we're watching films, all those great films tomorrow, I want you to get excited. I want you to get loud, just like that. Um, so this, this festival, this is the first, and I hope, hope one of many repeating uh, film festivals. And this is, I think, the first of this kind, really, uh, an automotive-focused, racing-focused film festival um, with new films, with old films, with, with brand new premieres. We have the first showing of Rush, uh, we have, which is going to be awesome tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning, easier said than done, which is going to be great, which is the, the pre-screening of that. Yeah, a lot of rally fans here. Uh, so that's going to be fantastic. Um, this, none of this is possible without a lot of help. Um, so I would like to thank uh, a lot of people who are involved. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank PlayStation and Gran Turismo for, for helping pull this together. Yeah. We, we have the creator of Gran Turismo here. People will not leave his game. They are glued to the simulator. That is how good it is. Um, I'd like to, of course, thank my, thank my team at Jalopnik, uh, who's fantastic. The people at Drive, uh, who are helping out a ton here. Drive, yeah, people are excited. Uh, Road and Track has also been a big help, so uh, big thanks to them. Um, individually, I would really like to thank uh, Mallory McMorrow, who's the reason why all of this is happening. And uh, have a little gift, so enjoy that. Check out the card, thank you. Uh, and Megan Fitzpatrick, wherever she is running around. She's working, thank you so much for all your work. Hold on, I James lipped in this, so I have big blue cards with everyone else. Um, some guy named Ray Wirt, I don't know. That's uh, Ray Wirt, if you know who he is. Um, and of course, the, the people at uh, Classic Car Club Manhattan for hosting this, uh, this really great event. So, round of applause. So, tomorrow, we're going to be showing a lot of great movies over at the uh, BAM Cinema. And what all these films have in common, what we, when we picked these films out, um, it was to, to discuss, really, it's a, it's a film festival, but it's a discussion of cars and car culture and what car culture means, which is why we're doing this kickoff panels to really have, we have these great luminaries here. We have the best people who would return our phone calls here tonight. Um, and so uh, with that, let me introduce this esteemed panel. Uh, Kazunori Yamauchi needs no introduction, but I'm going to do it anyways. The creator of the Gran Turismo system. Also, I would also point out, not only is he, he head of Paul Fani, the studio, and the creator of all the great Gran Turismo films, also a race car driver in his own right at the uh, 24 Hours of Nürburgring, VLN, Thunder. I mean, he's done a ton of racing, and he's always, almost always won. Uh, so Kaz is great. Um, right to my right here, over here, Jim, uh, Jim Glickenhaus. Uh, Jim Glickenhaus. Not even really a car collector, like a car preservationist uh, with one of the best collections in the world. And not only a preservationist who thinks, well, let's put it behind a glass wall where you can't do it. A man who drives the cars that he owns, which is really fantastic. And also, and I think a lot of people here from reading Jalopnik and Car and Driver and everything sort of know you as this great race team owner and great car collector. But actually, Jim's also a director and writer and producer in his own right. Um, and a fantastic guy, and I'm really excited to have him here. So let's round of applause. Over here we have uh, Tamir uh, Muscovici. You know, this, this came up earlier. Tamir has probably produced work you've all seen. You've probably seen his commercials. You've probably seen the great work he did on IndyCar for Honda. And I know everyone has seen Urban Outlaw, the great Magnus Walker short film, which is fantastic. That is Tamir. Uh, and he is awesome. And I wrote this in advance, as, as you can see by the card. So this, one of these jokes is not going to land. But um, Ken Block, I wrote, I wrote down driver, mogul, sunglasses enthusiast. But he's actually not wearing sunglasses. Um, I, this is also some math I did. His Gimkana Gim videos have more views than there are people in the United Kingdom, France, Canada, and Cuba combined. Fun fact. Also, as, uh, as Bill is uh, fond of pointing out, more people have walked on the moon, more Americans have walked on the moon 
than have scored points in the World Rally Championship. Kim Block is one of those men. <laughs> Sexier than an astronaut. All right, so we're gonna, do, we're gonna do some questions and then if we have some time at the end, we're gonna open up to questions, much better questions from all of you. Um, but first, I'm just gonna do sort of a round robin question. This is a question for everyone. All the films that we're showing, whether it's Rush or Senna, you know, all these films are about people who are passionate about cars. Um, and, and so my question is going to be, you know, where did you get your passion for cars? And I'm going to start with Kazunori because uh, when I, like many of you, was young, I begged, begged my parents to get me a PlayStation. And then as soon as they put all the money down for a PlayStation, I begged, begged them to buy me a copy of Gran Turismo. And there, there are no like 12 year olds who know more about all the variations of a Subaru Impreza that you can buy than me uh, and all the people in this room. And really fed, that game fed my passion for cars. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here today. So, so my question is to you, where did you find your passion for cars? Yeah, my first experience and memory that I have with cars is uh, when I was about three years old, my dad used to drive me around for work, um, just drive me all over town in the passenger seat of his car. And uh, that's really where I, my first memories of cars you know, comes from. Tamir? You know, I think I follow the same. You know, my dad was an aerospace engineer, so we were looking at. Hi there. We're, we're still working on the microphone situation. All right. So I think it's the same kind of story. My dad was an aerospace engineer, and we always had blueprints and stuff like that, and taking things apart. And so you kind of learn from someone around you the kind of inherent beauty of cars and the mechanics of it. Jim. You know, my first experience, uh, I really should have learned something from. I was about eight or nine years old. At the, my mom took me to uh, MoMA to look at some artwork. And out in front was a gold um, 250 short wheelbase Berlinetta stuck in traffic with uh, a guy driving it and a really beautiful blonde woman who looked very unhappy. She was cooking in the car. And I think that's what started my fascination. And then I would ride my bike about 20 miles almost back and forth to Mr. Kennedy's dealership in Greenwich and stand out in the rain and look in at the cars. And uh, Mr. Kennedy hated kids, but um, one day it was raining, so he said, all right, come in. And then the deal was I could sit in the cars, and then the deal was I could steer the cars. I couldn't shift them. And then one day, you know, he let me go to the races with him and, um, you know, hang out. And then I told him I wanted to learn about Formula One. So he said, okay, well, just go to France uh, at the Grand Prix and walk into the Ferrari pits on Wednesday and start unloading the trucks and tell him I sent you. So when I was 17, that's what I did. And it was, uh, you know, took off from there. And now you get to follow that up. Oh. There, you want to take Ken? Uh, for me, it was, it was uh, genuinely, as a kid, uh, watching the Goopy rally days, I was just so enamored by like the Audi S1 and those type cars with uh, the big wings and everything. And then when Peugeot brought the, uh, the car over to tackle Pikes Peak in the 80s, uh, that was when I was hooked. I just loved rally and loved the cars that, the race, that raced and jumped and slid in the snow and in the dirt and, and on tarmac. So, Ever since then, that's all I've wanted to do. Sort of building on this and, and sort of building on your experience, sort of being inspired by racing, you know, we're, I, I, maybe I'm, I'm misreading this, but in, in seeing what everyone, everyone here has a connection to racing on this panel, um, and, and the films all have a connection to racing. And we, we see, we see the, what you're, the work you're doing, Global Rallycross, we're seeing European sports car racing, we're seeing with the internet, we now have access to, to what we could only maybe see with speed vision or, 
or see in a magazine or getting a tape of. You know, we have access to a world of mo motorsports. And, and I'm curious, and I'll, I'll just go backwards. I'll go the other direction. I'll start with you, Ken. Um, are, do, does it feel like we're in a renaissance of, of racing right now? Uh, to me, renaissance is actually a strange word for that. Uh, you know, for me as a kid, like, I was subject to just what was on TV. Like, what the TV people chose to put on was what I was stuck with watching and wasn't what I necessarily wanted to watch, uh, but that's what was on TV. But today, kids have an opportunity to watch so many different things and search the names of athletes they're interested in or sports that they're interested in. And, and that's why, for me, I, I think that, like, what I've been able to do with Rally and Jim Connor, that sort of thing, uh, we've reached a new audience with those sports that just hadn't seen it before because it just wasn't available. Uh, so for me, like the, the audience is now actually picking more what they want to watch based on what they actually do watch on the internet, as opposed to only the, the big networks picking what we want to watch based on what they choose to put on TV. So. I, I think a, a lot of the youth nowadays are actually sort of determining what we're going to see in the future. So that's what's actually the most interesting for me is that, you know, you know, places like NASCAR are just watching their ages of their consumers get older and older, yet things like Rally and Rallycross, we're actually seeing so many of the young kids starting to uh, watch it at a much, much young, younger age. So for me, it's a, a fun dynamic really to watch how this whole sort of racing and motorsports changes based on what the consumer is interested in. Um, you know, when I wanted to watch racing, when I started, you had to go to watch a race. Um, I became a ham radio operator so I could listen to the BBC uh, broadcast Le Mans when I was a real little kid. Um, the one thing that I would urge all of you is to go to a real race and um, frankly I, I would urge you to go to the 24 hours of Nuremberg ring because I think that that race is really what Le Mans was like in 1967 and I think you'll begin to understand why Mr. Ferrari called his autobiography they didn't call it this in the English version they called the English version um, the Enzo Ferrari story, but if you understand Italian, it was my life of terrible joys. And I think that's what you'll come to see. I mean, uh, very few of you probably went to Woodstock. I actually did. But, you know, surviving Woodstock and on Monday morning seeing uh, Jimmy stand there and play the Star Spangled Banner upside down on a Telecaster, it's like not something you can understand unless you were there. And if you go to the ring, and at 3 in the morning in the rain and the fog, and you see cars thundering through the night and their disc brakes glowing, you begin to feel just how real it is. And frankly, it's a lot different than reading about it on Jalopnik or even playing it on a simulator. And I think that's what's so great about Kaz. I mean, not only does he enable people to see it on a simulator, but he stands there in the blood, sweat, and tears and actually races. And for me, that's what it's about. Tamir, you, you obviously did a, the, the great IndyCar work with Honda, and you got to interview a lot of those drivers. Um, what, are, what are the sense that you get from them and from your own experience with it? About what exactly? Oh, about, about the, the resurgence of racing, the way we, we view racing now in America. Well, I, I think the, the point of what we have access to obviously has changed, but I think if you're going to use the word renaissance, I think it's the HD movement. Having, you know, it's like all these skater kids can now just buy bigger toys and put cameras on cars and put it online, right? Like, it's that same kind of skateboard mentality when we were shooting little videos that way. I think it's just kind of expanded and now there's a home for it and it's the cars. As for racing and broadcast and all that, it's, I mean, these guys are on point. Being at Nurburg, filming Casanova, it, it was like no other experience in the world and I've been to many racetracks. So I can understand why people are passionate about that course. And then, I mean, basic, uh, to you guys as well, do you feel through what you do with GT Academy and through what you do with, with the game, do you think that more people are sort of engaging with racing in a way they were not able to before simulators and before Gran Turismo existed? Uh, 
えーとね、あのモータースポーツっていうのは、えー、例えば野球でいうと空振りが許されないスポーツあの空振りが許されないんですよね、一回空振りをしたら病院に行ってしまう。No. Motorsports is a sport where it's not like baseball where you're allowed a strike or two. The first strike you get, you're out. That's it. ですから、えっと今はシミュレーターで十分に訓練をしてからサーキットに行くことができるので、えっと以前に比べるとサーキットに行ってモータースポーツをするってことははるかに安全になったと思います。So now nowadays, now that you can really practice on a simulator before actually going physically out on a track to drive your cars, it's a lot safer than it used to be. I'm going to switch over to some individual questions now. Uh, Kim, this is the first for you. So you've sort of made driving an art form. You've made your, your Gymkhana videos are, are viral videos. They're huge. Like we said, everyone watches them multiple times. Um, there are some car execs, and there are probably a couple here, actually, who go to bed every night worried because they don't know how to reach Actually, people in this audience, they don't know how to reach young people and get them excited about cars and car culture, and you have done that. How have you done that? What is the answer for getting people under 28 interested in cars? <laughs> Please solve all of their problems. Go. Uh, I love that question. <laughs> I get asked that at Ford all the time. <laughs> no, I, honestly, I, all that I really did was I mean, I've been a fan of rallies since I was a little kid, and I just really wanted to watch cars go sideways and make a lot of smoke and jump. So that's basically what I did in some videos, and some people have really enjoyed watching it, so we keep making more. But, you know, honestly, like I said, I've I, just been a fan of rallies since I was a little kid. That was what I wanted to watch, and we made videos that, like, I personally wanted to watch and I wanted to drive. And so. I think there's just been this nice link from what I do as a race car driver and then can actually go out and do as sort of a marketing film piece and put it all together to make uh, some nice clips. So generally it's been a really fun mesh of what I do uh, in my background as far as marketing coming from DC and what I enjoy to do in the car. So honestly I'm just a f lucky bastard that gets to go out and thrash cars and, and people enjoy watching it. So thank you, thanks everybody for watching. <laughs> uh, sort of building on that, actually, we, we have a clip here. Uh, this is something that no one has seen before, uh, and this will blow your mind if we blow your mind is the key for that. So, so hopefully it's coming in a second. You're all going to want to see this right behind me as soon as we press that play button.
Hello, there we go. Uh, that was also the Gran Turismo 6 trailer, which is also very cool. Uh, the thing that you saw before that uh, was the first glimpse anyone has had of the Gran Turismo Vision GT program that they're working on, which is very exciting and is all about bridging that sort of gap between what we see in the digital world with cars uh, and what we see in the real world. Um, so uh, I would love uh, Kazunori to explain your vision behind Vision Gran Turismo. Vision Gran Turismo is a world of leading brands so the Vision Gran Turismo project is something where we asked all the leading brands and automotive manufacturers of the world to make us what their definition of a Gran Turismo would be and, and make it for us in Gran Turismo so, so that we could provide it to players and users all around the world. えっと、僕は自動車メーカーの皆さんに対してセクシーな車を作る理由をえ、作りたかったんですね。で、そういう呼びかけをしたところ、え、今のところ22を超える自動車メーカーの皆さんがセクシーなスポーツカーをデザイン
Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus. My wife's name's Cameron. I'm Glickenhaus, so I, that was what we called ourselves. And, you know, 10 million people watch that YouTube. And I guess the best part of the story was I ran into Ferrari like about four months later and they said, why did you do that? We didn't tell you to take the Ferrari badge off. So I guess, the, 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 this, to sum it up, my wife used to say to me, Jim, every story you tell begins with someone was pissed off at Ferrari. Guess what? You've become that person. That is awesome. I cannot imagine Ferrari being mad at you. I cannot. I can't imagine that ever happening. Um, Tamir, going to go to you. So you made a film that we're all very familiar with. You made Urban Outlaw about Magnus Walker, that great strange man, that great Porsche customizer, uh, a fabric artist really, uh, a fantastic guy. And he's a, kind of an obsessive. I mean, he has to have one of every of that generation 9-11. Um, and I was thinking a lot of the films, especially when you see Black Air tomorrow morning, you know, it's about people who are obsessed. And people who are obsessed are so much fun to watch. W why is it that we, especially with Urban Outlaw, why is it just a man talking about his obsession? Why, obviously the filmmaking is beautiful, but why do we care? Why is it so captivating for us? <clears throat> well, not to give away any secrets, but it's an easy film to make, right? If people are passionate. It, kind of comes out and they uh, want to keep talking which with Magnus was easy but I think that you know the 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 alchemy with whether it's Urban Ella or any of these car films is trying to find those stories right and there's that kind of pioneer racing heritage that he encapsulates by wanting to modify the cars or some of these other films where it really becomes people stories and it's not about the sheet metal. You could change the badge, change the car. It's really about their passion to pursue this dream. And then, you know, whether it's a dream about cars or deep sea fishing, if they're engaging, they're engaging. And so as filmmakers who happen to like cars, we gravitate towards those stories. Yeah, and I think, I think that's a great point. And I think that in Senna, which is such a beautiful film, you don't there's almost no discussion of the cars. It, I mean, you know what team he races for, but you, you, you're following a human being. And I actually saw Senna in a theater with one other woman. It was an older woman who knew nothing about F1. And at the end of the movie, we were both in tears, and she knew nothing. And it was just such a moving story that way. I think that's I think it's a very good insight. Um, so there are films at this festival that will not be viewed as many times as your films online can. I mean, there, there, some of these films will not be seen as much as one of your videos. Already the last one was huge. It was exciting. They had the Hollywood one. You've done so much. You've drifted up walls in France. Um, what is the creative process behind that? And how the hell are you going to top the last one? How are you going to make a better film? Well, I guess part of the process is really kind of <coughs> sort of looking at what we've done in the past and trying to figure out how to th make things more difficult for me in the car and do things that are, are unique and fun. I mean, everything that we do in these films uh, all comes off rally driving. It's all skills that I've learned from racing rally. Uh, so everything that you see in it, it's all a manipulation of how to drive an all-wheel drive, like rally type car. So the, I'm very sort of strict about the types of things I want to do. And on top of that, we want to make sure they look good also. So it is a fun, creative process. Uh, and uh, not only do I do get to work on the creative side, but I also get to work on the, the driving angle too. Um, so it's a, it's a I sort of double dip in that way that I get to you know, have fun on both sides of that. Uh, but to, to your last question is how do, I, how do I sort of keep progressing it? Well, I sort of f***ed myself with Jim Gymkhana 5. <laughs> like I, I don't know how to do something better than taking over San Francisco. I really don't. I have ideas, and we're gonna we're gonna have some fun trying some stuff. But but really, to have a place like San Francisco, which is just a absolutely iconic city to me, something I grew up watching, like Bullet and things like that. And even as a skateboarder going there and skateboarding on those streets, it just was, it, it's such an amazing city to be able to go there and do whatever I wanted. Like literally, I 
I asked for and got most every location I wanted. And they actually offered me the bridge. I didn't even ask for the bridge. They offered me the bridge. So I, I honestly don't know how I'm going to one-up that one. I, like I said, I'm kind of <laughs> we, have, we have takeover New York. Can you drift the Burj Dubai? Every floor all the way up. <laughs> I, I've, ac I've actually asked about doing the, the tennis court, but we'll see. That would, that would be awesome. Um, oh, cards are out of order. Uh, found it. Found my card. We're all good. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to a clip. Um, this is also something that no one, I don't think, outside of this room and a few other places have seen. Uh, this is a new film uh, coming from Tamir. Uh, and Gran Turismo, we're going to watch it and then Tamir's going to talk about it. So listen up. The truth of the matter is, is when we're really pushing the limits of the human experience, we don't know how it'll turn out. If we did, it wouldn't be what Magellan did. A person who convinced 271 men to risk their lives to explore the edge of the world where everyone said that you're certainly going to die and to have such a clarity of vision that's where genius takes place a mind that creates where nothing once was they're the madmen that change the way the world works i see him as an artist and a perfectionist. He's proven himself with, with his passion. He's created this game that probably nobody anticipated would have the type of impact it has to society today. I mean, who knew? I mean, who knew that video games would get that realistic? The Jibunga Sozo Stage only. This is the most innovative driver search program ever. Describe him as a ghost is, is very accurate. That looks fantastic. Now, now your challenge is you have to follow your own trailer uh, and explain what it is that we just saw and uh, what we have to look forward to. Well, in short, uh, you know, kind of following uh, Urban Ella on some other projects, PlayStation, Polyphony approached me and said, would you be willing to do a documentary film that kind of looked at the 15 year legacy of the game and why would you say no? So I said yes. And basically the film explores the history of the game, how it's changed technology, how it's infiltrated the automotive industry, changed the automotive industry, racing, and kind of created this cyclical nature of simulator into practical application and then back into simulator. And, and when do we get to see it? That's a Sony question, but uh, they're giving us the time to do it right, so probably end of the year. Awesome. Um, and that actually, that's a great segue uh, into a question for Kazunori. GT is, it's 15 years old um, right now. And um, I mean, it's, it's, it's been around for ha literally half my life. The sixth one is coming out. It is, it is, people are going crazy for it, like it's a new Twilight movie. 
Everyone is really excited. Um, and you're doing a feature film on top of that. Uh, first, first question, what do we have to look forward to from Gran Turismo 6? Why are we all going to run out and buy that game? えっとね、GT6って大きく2つ目的があります。で、1つは、え、内側に向かう力。Yeah, so in GT6 there's there's two objectives and one one of it one of them is a an inward force that you're going to see. えっと、それはま、新しいフィジクスだったり、新しいエアロダイナミクスだったり、新しいレンダリングエンジンだったり、これまでのリアルドライビングシミュレーターをま、進化させることですね。so you'll see the new physics, a new rendering engine that makes everything look better, new aerodynamics. Basically, all the fundamental things that makes a, a driving simulator great is going to be improved. で、あともう一つは外に向かう力で、これはあのビジョン先ほどお見せしたビジョングランツリスモが代表的なんですけれども、あのビデオゲーム業界のもうバウンダリーをこう突き破っていくようなま活動ですね。その二つを大事にして